Well, sure. No, I'd just like to begin by saying that this is a huge honor for me and a privilege, and I can't think of a better place to, to be director of tennis and head men's tennis coach. I, I have a strong connection with UVA. I've had a connection since I first got here in 2010, and and uh, developed great relationships, and everyone's just embraced me since day one. And so it's a it's an honor and and a privilege to be here, and I, I appreciate the opportunity. And and uh, I'd like to thank UVA for for bringing me bringing me on board. When did you find out this job would be open? Well, when when Brian announced, so not the director of tennis job, but you know the head of men's tennis job when Brian announced. So that's that's when. It came open, and that was the first I heard of it. So, so he ne didn't give you a heads up or anything, despite your connection, or? I mean, he didn't really need to give me a no. He didn't really give me a heads up. I just found out through word of mouth and through the the announcement, and and obviously it was something that I was going to be interested in um, because it is a dream job, and it's it's a place that I love, and and it's a community that that like I said has embraced me like no other community has, other than the city of Miami where I'm from, but. Uh, but yeah, so I was I was interested from the beginning. Has this been has this become the best college job in America? I think so. I think so. I think we've got all the ingredients you need to be successful, and I think Brian's proved that, and I think the women's program has, has proved that also to to another to another level as well with their ACC titles and their quarterfinal finishes at the NCAA tournament. Um, I think we've got you know world class academics, a beautiful beautiful grounds, incredible people surrounding the program. Uh, we've got history, we've got tradition, we've got former players coming back all the time. So people love this place, and so I, I'm, I'm excited. I think I think we've got a great product to sell, and so we're gonna we're gonna keep the momentum going. How did this uh, How did it play out? Did you contact UVA? Did they contact you? Did Brian said anything? How does that unfold with uh, you interviewing or whatever? Yeah, no, I, I definitely in the through the grapevine let people know in the community that I was interested. And uh, just let just to let the administration that know that I was interested, and uh, and it kind of played out that way. And then the conversation started happening, and I was flattered, and and you know I jumped right on it because, it, like I said, it's a dream job. With that in mind, in the time you've been away, did you have other jobs that you were <coughs> consider? Did anything else make you think maybe I'll get back into college coaching, or it was this, or, or did you stay with what you were doing? College coaching was, it's, I mean, a very small group of places that I would consider. And this would be the top choice by far, and it's it's not close. So. You were here. You were here as this was building to what it's become. How exciting is it now to kind of be tasked with maintaining it? Well, I learned a lot during my four years with Brian, and he's been a mentor to me and and taught me a lot about the way he runs his system. And uh, I know a lot of the players. I know almost all the former players. So I know what it's taken to win here, and. Uh, and I, I have a very good grasp on that, and I'm looking forward to transition a lot of that towards the women's program as well. And um, yeah, I mean, I've I've literally bled orange and blue since since I showed up here in 2010, and and I love the way Brian did it. So um, I'm obviously going to put my my uh, you know my trademark on it, and I'm going to do things my way. But you know, Brian, I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel. He did a great job. Is tennis like football and basketball, where underclassmen? turn pro during their careers and do you have to recruit any of the people who returning players on underclassmen on this year's team? Can you repeat that question again? Sorry. Well, it, is it possible that players with remaining eligibility could yes. turn pro and you have to re-recruit? It is, it is possible. It is possible. I mean, at the end of the day, whenever I run into that situation as an assistant coach is, you know, I, I tell the student athlete, you know, I want you to do what's best for you, I'm here for you for advice, and I support you either way, obviously. You know, I, I articulate the service and the resource and the support that we can provide them here at the University of Virginia, and I think it's best in class when it comes to collegiate tennis. But, um, but I, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm all about the student athlete, you know, being happy, at peace, and fulfilled, and whether that's turning pro or staying at the University of Virginia, that ultimately is up to them, but Obviously, have you had these conversations with current players like Soderlund and. No, I have not. Would you feel any uh, pressure to keep it going? I mean, uh, you're, you're you're kind of being handled handed the keys to the Ferrari here. It's yeah. The top program. You know, I get that question a lot, but it's such a privilege to be here, and more than pressure, I feel I just feel grateful. I really feel grateful and honored to be here, and and I think it's an incredible opportunity. And we again, we've got so many ingredients and so many things in our working in our favor 
to uh, to attract the best student athletes in the world and and um, yeah yeah it's what will be the biggest challenge to, to keep it going and keep it at this high level of success the biggest challenge is probably just to be patient you know just to be patient and uh, you know understand that we do lose a lot of players on the men's side and uh, and on the women's side you know we there's some work to be done as well um, so I just need to be patient and you know I've I've put a a process together, a plan together, and I will be consulting with the administration, my supervisor, and my coaching staff who, who uh, we're in the process of hiring, and we'll be fine-tuning it as time goes on. And, and, but yeah, just be patient with the process and stick to it and, and uh, be disciplined with the plan. But yeah. As, as the director, director of, of tennis, oh, yeah, was, I was, I was thinking all the words right out of my mouth. But, uh, <laughs> as the director of tennis, how involved will you be with hiring the new women's coach? Very involved. Very involved. Um, I, uh, I'm really excited about that decision. You know, I, we, we want to hire somebody that's you know going to work super hard and be really positive and and relate to the players exceptionally well. Uh, it's it's a it's a very it's a massive decision, and uh, and it's it's going to work out. We're I, I want the, both programs collaborating as much as possible. Um, I want you know the the student athletes to feel like they have a base of coaches that they can go to for. You know, tennis conversations, life conversations, academic conversations. I would like the whole program to be working as a team and build that UVA tennis brand. And instead of it being UVA men's and women's tennis, I'd like for people to know us as UVA tennis. What uh, you mentioned, what you've been doing after you left down in Florida, the private coaching. What did you like about that experience, and what did you learn or get out of it? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it gave me a it gave me a, a look at what it's like to be on the other side of the coin because the player that I was working with was being recruited. So I got to see how other coaches recruit and how they communicate and you know, how, they, how they manage that whole process. So that gave me that, that, uh, that experience. And um, yeah, I coached one player, so it was, it was difficult in the sense that you know, it's just one player. If he's having a bad day, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad day. <laughs> on, a team, if, on a team, if you've got one player having a bad day, you've got eight or nine other players. So. It not necessarily has to be doesn't necessarily have to be a bad day. You said you bleed orange and blue. Uh, did you play at Duke? No. Uh, yeah, I did play at Duke. <laughs> but uh, so that's the blue. How, 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 do you, how, how do you rationalize that with people you know at Duke? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I love Duke. I had a great experience, but this feels like home, and uh, I've just made so many great friends here, and and there's such a Brian built such and Brian and Becky built such an amazing community of support around the program and they embraced me from day one which I'm so appreciative for and I'm so thankful for and I mean literally when I got when I got the job it was just yeah, it was so many texts so many calls people were so nice so friendly so supportive so uh, for that I mean I'm eternally grateful and I'm, I'm willing to uh, yeah put my life into this and How'd you end so up going? with the assistance job under Brian you remember Brian yeah I had breakfast with Brian uh, I had breakfast with Brian like three or four years prior to him calling me about that job. No. And I was up here with a really good friend of mine, um, with uh, actually a former player, Huntley Montgomery, and uh, he, uh, he introduced me to Brian and said, hey, you should have lunch with him, you know, if you're looking to get back into tennis, because I was in finance at the time, I believe. And uh, so I had a long breakfast with Brian, and uh, so we hit it off, but I didn't talk to him for two or three years after that. And then I got a call out of nowhere when I was working at the USTA as a men's national coach. And uh, he offered me, you know, he started talking to me and he offered me the job. And, and it, you know, it worked out. It was great, great working with him. You left in the midst of the ACC winning streak. And obviously the league has really risen since then with Carolina of Wake Forest. What kind of challenge yeah. will it be just even within the conference to yeah. maintain top dog status with this? No, yeah, it's, it's exciting. And I think it's good for the student athletes. The more competition, the better. You know, I mean, it's, it's, if anything, it's just, it's just great for our guys, especially developmentally. Better competition, better for the games, and, you know, a lot of the, the student athletes that we're going to be recruiting are probably going to be looking to play pro tennis after school. So at some point, they're going to have to be thrown to the wolves and thrown in the lion's den of competition against the best in the world. So I think it just makes sense that, that the ACC conference getting better and better is it's great for our guys and, and, uh, and the women. Were you at the NCAAs? I was at the NCAA. What was that like, uh, being the coach at waiting? I, I yeah. Didn't do any coaching while you were there. Yeah. No, it was, it was the most impressive NCAA championship that I've seen from the Virginia 
from the Virginia men. I've never seen them play more free. I've never seen them more composed. I've never seen them more united. The coaches were were dead on with, with what they were telling the guys, the game plans. And uh, I just, it was another level of, of uh, performance that I saw from, from the men in, in Athens. And it was sweet because, you know, we've never won it in Athens. So that was a, a nice way for Brian to go out. And he deserves it because he's, him and Becky and their whole family have put their, their life into this. Brian is known to be a, a very intense guy that never <laughs> takes no for an answer. What? What is your personality? Just like, <laughs> what, what kind of a guy are you? You seem a little more laid back. Yeah, I'm a little more <laughs> laid back. I mean, I'd like to think that I'm as tenacious as, as Brian in, in several areas of the job and my life. I love to work. Um, I need to do a good job of balancing that. Um, but but yeah, no, it's it. it I'm, I've got a little bit, a little bit, yeah, different approach. <laughs> but hey, the guy did an unbelievable job, and and um, he's he's relentless, and that's why he's going to do amazing things for American tennis. And I mean, I, I can't wait to see what he does for, for our sport in this country on the men's side, because he's, he's going to be so value added for, for that institution. How's your recruiting done since you've gotten the job? I guess you've talked to yeah. rising seniors and juniors or whatever. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, you again, I'm being, I'm, being, I'm being very patient with that. Um, I want to get a grasp on everything in the program on the men's and the women's side before, before I really attack that. So uh, when I do, I'm going to come with quality. I'm going to come with great timing. So um, it, it'll, it'll work out. I'm just being very patient with the recruiting right now. If you don't you mind going back to that experience in Florida coaching, who was the, the one player, what age bracket, what kind of a player, what was? Yeah, no, he's, uh, he, he lives in Boca Raton. And uh, he's, he will be attending Harvard in the fall of 2016. He's a brilliant kid and amazing young man and someone that's I'm, I'm a way better coach after my three years with him. It's not even close. I'm a way better coach. And he's, he taught me so much, and, and I'm appreciative for that time, and their family's been incredible with me. So I'm, I'm really thankful, and, and uh, they were really happy for me when, it, when this opportunity came about. Is there a connection then between good academic schools and, and guys who can play the game? Does yeah, that I think so. I mean, I think, I think to be a great tennis player, you've got to be, you've got to be relatively smart out there. You know, there are obviously, you know, a lot of players go out there and they play their best tennis when they're when they're not thinking that much. But there are some great players that play their best when they are thinking a lot. And so, it de it depends on the player. But but yeah, I think having a strong academic background only helps. I mean, especially because 99.9% .9 of them are going to need to get jobs after they play the pro tour. So I think it's in their best interest to invest in academics. Looking back at the director of tennis job, a new position here, not new in other college tennis jobs. What advantages, what changes does that entail for the way that the, the program is structured here? And, and I guess from your point of view, how does that change your job compared to what Brian was doing? Well, I'm still learning about the director of tennis role. Um, I'm, I'm in meetings this week and uh, next week to learn more about, you know, how this is going to work. But I mean, at the end of the day, I, again, I would like to build a UVA tennis brand where both, both programs are collaborating on as many levels as possible, um, on the court, off the court, everything within the NCAA rules, but I would like both programs collaborating as much as possible. So far, you, the announcement was made just after the NCAAs, is it? So you're at the NCAAs and the players don't know you're going to be their coach or how, was, how easy or hard was it to keep keep quiet about the thing? Yeah, no, people it was... Wondering, were people wondering, what are you doing here? Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was an interesting couple days and um, yeah, I was just so happy for the players. I mean, it was an emotional time, and and there were so many UVA fans out there, and you know, obviously people were asking questions, and but um, I was focused on the guys and focused on what was best for the team. You know, last thing I wanted to be was a distraction, and and um, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. A, it was. I'm glad I went. It was. Were it was people asking worth you, it. or do you think you were able to? You were kind of a surprise pick at all. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I was a surprise pick, but um, I know. I mean, yeah, I heard rumors, but I'm not sure if I was a surprise pick. Your uh, position with the USTA. Uh, what What did you learn from that that, that you think will help you in this job? Which position well, as a coach? As a coach yeah. Okay, as a coach. Um, well, you know, I, I understand. I understand uh, junior tennis pretty well because my main responsibility was to deal was to manage and coach. Um, and manage the relationships with the players born in 1995 and their coaches and 
provide as much supplemental help as I, as I possibly could for them. And uh, so it got me, it gave me a, a really close look as, you know, to what the coaches are like. I built a, a strong network within junior tennis and I got to know the, the players very well. And obviously in our center, there were kids of all ages coming in, so young and old. And so I, if anything, it just expanded my network and it also gave me access to great coaches, you know, coaches that have coached number one players in the world, top 10 players in the world. And it's a great place to, to get educated, to meet people, um, to have access to all the, you know, the best minds in the world in tennis. And that job is incredible. And, you know, I'm indebted to, to Jose Higueras and Jay Berger for, and Patrick McEnroe for, for hiring me during that time. I mean, that was, that was an unbelievable opportunity for me as a young coach. You may or may not know that Ryan was working with Bronco and his kids to play, teach them how to play tennis. Oh, really? Are you spoken to Bronco about resuming that or? Not yet. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty busy guy, but I, I look forward to, to meeting with him and talking with him. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be open with all the coaches. I'd love to help them out. And, you know, I'd love to kind of trade our skill sets and, and, and see how we can help each other out. I mean, I'm all about building a community amongst the coaching staff and, and uh, yeah, building great relationships with them.